Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make your very own travel brushes because a bunch of you guys asked me to. Um, I bought a set of three of these double-ended brushes uh, from Jerry's Artorama about a month ago, and they were on sale. It was $10 for three, um, but they had double ends, so it was like six brushes in one. And I thought it would be perfect if I cut them in half and had a set of nice short-handled travel brushes that I could like um, put in a little uh, envelope or a little pocket and put with like my little travel kits because they're about this my travel tins because they're about the same a little bit longer but i put them in like a little pouch or maybe my um i usually keep like an old sock or something with the end cut off that i that i fold in half and put around one of these tins and i could slide my brushes in there um that way i'd have the versatility of a few different brushes and it wouldn't take up very much space plus these are inexpensive enough that i wouldn't feel like um like if something happened, I wouldn't really feel bad if I lost one. These were the best duo, B-E-S-T-E -E duo by Creative Mark. I think they're actually having a BOGO sale at Jerry's right now. Um currently and then um after i cut them well let's just do it well, i don't need to explain all this let's just show you how i just had those there so i could white balance my camera um so what you're going to need is a fine tooth saw and you're going to need a couple of blocks to um to kind of support your brush while you cut i also recommend that you do this with inexpensive brushes and what you want is kind of a, a brush that comes to a good point now the drawback to these brushes i found was that they have a, well they first their great points is they have great uh, great snap, great uh, come to a great point, but they don't hold a ton of water. So to correct that, what I did, and this is going to probably horrify you, but um, I'm actually rubbing them on sandpaper. And what this is doing is it will flag the ends of my bristles a little bit because and your more expensive um, synthetic brushes will be flagged. That basically means like the end of the brush hairs are split. I'm actually going to take off this top layer. This is just a, you can use any like fine sandpaper. This is just like a, the kind you would use to sharpen your pencils. It's just a, it was handy. Um, so that's why I'm using it because I had it already. Um, and so it's not really going to look that much different, but it's, it's going to slightly soften the brush. But since these are synthetic and really snappy already, I'm not worried about, about losing that. And it's going to, um, kind of, uh, flag the ends so, you, so they hold more water. And I'm hoping that it might kind of also abrade, um, I'm trying to get the, the like whole shaft of the uh, bristles, um, to make contact with the sandpaper because I think that if I can pit that and rough that up well, then it's going to hold more water. Um, and as I'm a watercolorist, that's what I want. If you're an acrylic artist, you probably don't want to do this. Or if you're an oil artist, you probably don't want to do this. But this is, since I'm a watercolorist, um, that's what I want to do. And I'm doing the same thing here, just going around. I'm being gentle. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt the point, but I want this brush to hold more water. Besides, I have a couple smaller ones in the set for more details. So I'm not, even if I do lose a point on this, if it holds more water, because there's a lot, this is a nice fat belly. It's got a lot of bristles there. So I know that this is going to be my most absorbent brush. So I really want to, um, I want to make sure that that feature is preserved hopefully i'm not giving anybody the heebie-jeebies um <laughs> with the sound of the sandpaper but but you got to do what you got to do i try to sanding sponge but it's just not uh it's not abrasive enough for that okay and you will want to rinse off that brush before you touch it to your watercolors or you're going to leave some sawdust behind is it sawdust if it's brush dust i don't know so then what you're going to do is uh, you're going to put your bristle your, your brush across your um, two blocks of wood. Now, if you don't have a double-ended brush, that's fine. Just cut your brush to the to the length that you want it. Um, I've had to do this before when I've had long-handled long oil painting brushes. It wouldn't fit in my um, my French easel box. Um, I just cut them down a little bit so they would fit, and not a big deal. It's not difficult to do. So I'm going to shoot for this little um, this little divider here where it goes from black to white. But you could just measure it and make them all the same length, whatever you want to do. These are going to be slightly different because each of the brushes started off is slightly different. So your first couple like your first cut you're gonna just have to go kind of slow and make yourself a little groove okay so it's the same thing if you're if you're just cutting a brush short for travel once you've got that little groove then you can go back and forth but I do think that this saw um I think this only cuts on the push I could be wrong now uh if you want to be real Carefully, you can kind of turn it a little bit so you don't end up with a uh, with like a splinter or anything. Now this cut really cleanly. Now you could leave it just like that, 
but um, I want to round it over a little bit. And on some of the smaller ones, I actually sharpened it to quite a point so I could actually use it for some scraping effects. And I'm going to show you uh, it in action. We're not probably going to do a painting, but I'll show you some different strokes and, and kind of tell you why I did what I did. Um, that way, if you're not crazy about that idea, idea, you don't have to do it. So for these, though, since they're bigger, I think I'm just going to round them off a little bit. So I've just got my multi-sized pencil sharpener here. And actually, um, I use this pencil sharpener a lot for my colored pencils, so it's nice to sharpen something like a stick. Well, a regular pencil actually is perfect, but um, this will actually kind of clean the gunk, the colored pencil gunk, out of my uh, sharpener, so that's kind of a good thing. Now, I do find a standing sponge easier for... Um, for doing this part because you've got a little give so it'll kind of help you round this over and my apologies if this is giving you guys the creeps because <laughs> because of the sound i know the microphone's about a foot away from the sanding sponge it's probably probably freaking you out but that's nice and it's getting nice and smooth if i need more uh if i need more sanding i can actually put that right on top of there you can do that there that's nice and smooth I know I could coat this with paint. Um, in fact, that's probably what I'll do. Probably coat these uh, rounded ones with a little bit of um, nail polish just to seal them up really good. Make them look a little nicer. You don't have to do that. It's totally optional. You'll notice like in a lot of brushes, um, you will have the end contrasted like that. They, I, I, I know some, some do, some don't. It's about half and half. Okay, so that's nice and... I might sand it more later, but you get you get the point. Um, so there we have two nice travel brushes there. Now I um, I did sharpen these and sand these to more of a point. They're not like they're not sharp because um, when I look at an aquarelle handled brush, I know I've got one right here. So I just had it right here. This isn't sharp either. These beveled scrapers aren't sharp. Um, the reason all these scrapers are made of acrylic or plastic, acrylic, acrylic, um, is because if you paint the end, um, it will transfer paint. So I was going to originally ask my husband to cut it off on a nice clean angle and then I was just going to sand it and paint it. But then I realized if I go scraping um, my paper, I'm going to leave paint behind probably. Just like if you've ever tried to, like if you're making a, a card or you're maybe tearing watercolor paper and you go with your fingernail and you're wearing nail polish, it like to crease some paper, it will leave your nail polish behind. So I didn't want that to happen on a nice painting. So that's why I opted for that. And then I realized on these smaller brushes, if I wanted to, I just took a, a drinking straw and cut it in half. And I could put that right on there if I want a longer brush, if that is more comfortable for me to hold. I'm not really that picky, but that is pretty darn comfortable. Honestly, I was a little afraid that I was going to mess the balance up of these brushes because they were tapered quite a bit smaller in the center when they were together. So this one uh, matched up with this this one. Um, so it got skinnier in the center, which made it really easy to cut through. But then I was worried, oh, no, maybe, um, maybe they did that because of the extra weight on the other side. And I'm going to feel very off balance. But. I really, they're they're lightweight enough that it's not like the the tops are so heavy that it feels off balance to me. Um, I would suggest if you do want to do the straw thing, these fatter brushes are going to need a bigger straw. Um, I think like at fast food restaurants, like that sell milkshakes, probably have bigger straws that you could uh, just nab nab one next time you go in there. I probably like McDonald's or something might have a, a fat straw that you could get. Or like if you're like us and use glow sticks a lot, like Halloween and stuff, um, they come in a rigid tube, um, like the glow stick necklaces and stuff, and you could save those and use that. So let's just, uh, this is obviously just the back side of a sketch um, that I, I was working on skin tones. I'm working on a tutorial for mixing skin tones. Uh, it, clearly I need more work, but, uh, but I figured we could do a little sketch here on the back side of that. So um, let's just use this first one here I'm just gonna grab the closest watercolor palette oh and um, I gotta rinse don't don't forget rinse off your brush after you've sanded those bristles because you don't want to get any debris on your um, in your watercolor paints I'm just gonna use these inexpensive Jane Davenport ones because they're right here on my table and um, we'll just I'll just kind of give you an idea because because this is let's pretend we're out in, in the world and we're painting a picture um, so I probably start off with my juiciest brush which would be one of these two we can try both of them. Um, and I would wet the paper. Look at that. Wetting the paper pretty well. That's just one dip of water. And I've got almost half half of this 9 by 12 paper wet. So um, I didn't show you before. I will tell you it's, it's better to sand these when they're dry. You just get a better abrasion. When you try to do it when you're wet, the, the bristles want to kind of um, 
flatten a little bit and it's uh and it's just harder to get a get them any sanded off quite frankly all right i'm gonna grab some of this ultramarine color i think i'll add mix in a little bit of this uh kind of burnt sienna light color nothing wrong with painting with these I think the flat actually is a little bit more absorbent than my round. Yeah, I think this one actually, for some reason, maybe the bristles are, no, the bristles aren't longer. For whatever reason, this one, see, maybe I sanded this one a little more vigorously. It seems to be holding more water. I get a nice sky. This is not going to be like some fantastic painting, guys. This is just me showing you uh, what I would do here. If I was using this out in the field, maybe do a little bit more to a nice dark sky. I always add my color to the uh, top of the sky. And this is really cheap paper, by the way. <laughs> so it's a uh, De La Rowney Aquafine uh, from that sketchbook. But I just love it because I don't have to worry about it. I'm not like fretting that, oh my gosh, I'm ruining this paper on this crappy painting. Um, maybe lift out a couple of clouds with my rag. Maybe add in a little bit of... Um, a little bit of shadow there under those clouds. I feel like I have good control. This is still the fattest one in the in the set. I'm just put a few gray clouds in there. Maybe put in some water. I don't know why I'm painting this like lame landscape. Um, cut because I want to show you some effects. Okay, so that's we're gonna put in. So we're gonna make some green. Oh my gosh, this is horrible. All right, so I'm gonna just grab some really bright green and grab some warm yellow. Okay, so let's say we were doing some grasses here, and for whatever reason, I can't get a fine enough line. Well, let's try the finer lines with these little brushes. Okay, that's giving me a finer line. Except I'm going into wet paint, but that's fine. Um, so I've got that. I've got that um, availability. But then if I want to get some really fine dark lines, I can scrape with the bottom of that brush where I had um, where I had sharpened it. So see, now I have all these really nice fine lines there. Um, now I might have like a puddle. And let's say I decided I wanted to extend this brush. So I've got that on the end of my brush there. And I've got this puddle. I can actually draw some lines up with that. Use that like a nib of a pen. It will give me super, super fine lines. Like if I was doing hair or something. So um, so that's useful there. And I'm sure I'll need to trim it because it will run. It'll get um, kind of frayed or soft with use. But, it, you know, even if it's frayed or soft, I can still use it as a handle to balance my brush if I am concerned. So I'll just give you a quick... Uh, a quick overview of what my uh, brushes, what the shapes are here. Um, I got this set for 10 bucks, like I mentioned. Um, I don't know if it's still on sale because it was kind of like a BOGO thing, but, um, but it might be, uh, I, I mean, because it was like an overstock thing, it might, but it might be a, uh, it might be like a, it should be in the BOGO sale because it's a Creative Mart product. So there's that. So you can get a lot of, uh, holds quite a bit of paint. Look at that. I mean, I'm going right to town with those swirls. Um, can't complain about that. I did sand all of these. So I am getting much better results than I was um, originally. So we got this flat. Those two were there, were, were their mates. And then we got the medium sized brushes, which would be like this guy here. And this one here, I think. Oh, no, what? This was the smallest one right here. I grabbed the wrong one first, but that's all right. I'll get the hang of it. So that was the smallest one that was going like with tons and tons of paint for a long time. That one's doing pretty well, too. And our two biggest ones. I can always jessel over this and do something on top of it. So, and this is really cheap paper. So please don't fret if you're like, oh my gosh, you're wasting all that paper. That's terrible. Forget about it. Not important. Okay, so, but I, I'm like most excited about the big brush because I like how I can get a pretty fine line there. But I also have a nice wide line I can get because it's such a fat, thirsty brush. 
and it's thirstier because I sanded it. And then we've got this nice flat here, which I was surprised at how much it held. Ooh, that's a pretty color. That's like a teal. Ooh, that was the um, thalo blue and thalo green. It's very pretty. This, but this one, um, I think I was a little more aggressive when I sanded this one because this one holds quite a bit. But there you have it. Um, so to, again, to recap, to do the extender on the fatter brushes, you're going to need a fatter straw such as a milkshake straw. If that's important to you, it doesn't really bother me. Um, but then, but you do want to cut your straw kind of short so that it can go like in your little case or tin or whatever. Um, and I wish I had grabbed my, uh, if you, this is going to sound weird. Okay. So you take out like a tube sock and you cut the toe off and you fold it in half a couple times. You can tuck the ends of those brushes in and you can actually slide the sock over the outside of your palette. Um, or, you know, what you could sew a little pocket in your painting rag or whatever, just to kind of keep them handy. Or you can make yourself a fancy pouch, sew yourself a fancy pouch or something. But I like how this is small. You could actually put it in your, um, if you wear a um, smock, you could put it in your smock pocket. Or if you wear like a, an old, like a, like a big men's shirt as a painting shirt, you could tuck it right in your, like the little pencil protector pocket that men's shirts have. Um, and that would be a great way to store them. But they've got, I've got a beautiful set of six short handle brushes. This would have cost me like 50 bucks to go buy. Um, I made it myself for 10. So I'm very pleased with that. I hope you give something like this a try. Maybe you have some old brushes in your stash that just aren't getting the love because um, they're not your favorite. So you don't bother using them in the studio. They're not quite as absorbent as the brushes that you usually love to use, but you need a set to go traveling with. Um, it's a perfect fit. Get those brushes you're not using. Try this. Um, you know, if you're not using them anyway, then they're already bought and paid for. So it practically could be a free project. I hope you enjoyed this. I will skip back. I'll show you. I did a, a few little examples with the, um, on an old page here. I was, when I was just kind of first experimenting the before and like as before with these brushes, I would get like maybe four inches of watercolor before it started to break up. Whoops, about four inches of watercolor before the, the started to break up and then I just really uh, hazy lines. And then after cutting, after sanding them, you could see I could get much better lines. After sanding it once, I could get like a full line like that. Um, so I got double the flow of my of my brush. So, you know, again, it's a do it at your own risk type of project, but, um, but I'm really happy I did it. And now I have this lovely set of six little travel brushes. Um, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. And until next time, happy crafting.